Continuing the trend of, if it came out on the Spectrum in the 80s and it cost £2, I probably owned it, we have Jason's Gem from Mastertronic. A title so beloved it apparently didn't get a review in any magazine other than Micro Hobby, which isn't even in English. I think this is the final score it got? This fuzzy image that's rendered completely illegible by artifacting, and even if I could read it, I'd have to translate it anyway, and I'm too lazy to do that. So basically, Micro Hobby gave Jason's gem <coughs> out of... <laughs> Which is pretty good for a game that costs £2, but it's also wrong. Jason's Gem is hilariously broken, cheap and tatty in a way that only games released in 1980 for £2 could be. Playtesting your game meant eating into vital profits. Why ensure the game is working in favour of the player when you can release it and get some beer money in for the weekend? Developed by Simon White, who is most definitely not Sandy White, his career seemed to start and end with these three titles on the spectrum, the other two of which I've never heard of, but just look at them. Even the screenshots make me sad. John Smith, or Smythe, however, is listed as a contributor to the game, presumably on the illustration side of things, because I think that's what he was most known for, probably. But regardless, he has some good games knocking about on his credits list, from Feud to Finders Keepers, so presumably he was at the whims of Mastertronic's demand at this point. All that being said, let's take a look at the game itself, shall we? It comes in three parts, and the first part is where most people realise that things aren't quite working with a, a level of standard fairness. Your task is to land on this. I don't know what that is. I want to say a tooth? You've got to land on it anyway, but here's the thing. It changes direction. Your controls are consigned to moving left and right at pretty much exactly the same speed as this sentient tooth, which means... You can have everything lined up perfectly, and then, nope, that's a life lost. There is no ability to recover, you just guess. You have to be pretty exact in order to even get past this stage. This little nubbin thing at the bottom of your spaceship has to fit over the gap in the tooth, otherwise it'll class as a crash landing. I'd love to give you some tips on how you do this, but there are no tips, you just keep doing it until you win. This is not a great start, but things do improve in the next section. Here we have an area that's a bit like that film Descent, but the bit where all the women die is replaced with a spaceship. Also, you can shoot lasers. This bit is as far as I ever got as a kid, because the hit detection is somewhere between being quite lenient and unfathomable. As in, sometimes the game thinks you'll be moving along fine, and then suddenly the game will decide, no, this is not fine, in fact, and you'll lose a life. The idea here is to shoot your way through the blocks as you descend, and you'd think there's not a lot you could get wrong here in terms of game design. I mean, it's incredibly simple, right? But you forgot, this was designed by the guy who made the first level, so you get sections where this kind of thing happens. That's right, a death loop. It seems that where you exit the previous level, that's the place where you'll enter the next screen. But he didn't think to ensure that the next screen would be clear of space cubes, or whatever the hell they are, to allow you to actually survive, so you just have to hope for the best, really. It could have been an intentional design choice, maybe, but if it was, I think that would just make things even worse. Anyway, there's a landing pad at the bottom of the final segment here, and once you land on it, However you like, may I add, because this landing pad is for some reason nowhere near as cruel as the landing pad on the first level, because why not just make things up as you go along? Keep the player guessing, that's good design anyway. The next bit is a platformer, a rudimentary platformer with the standard level of ZX Spectrum difficulty, awkward jumps, a shotgun approach to level design and everything in between. There's not a great deal to say about any of this other than Good luck getting through it all without a lot of practice. Your jump is a fixed arc, the hit detection is a moon rock short of a museum, and you'll have already lost 75% of your lives just getting here in the first place. Now you may well be expecting me to say, I don't recommend this game, it's rubbish, and you'd be half right. It is rubbish, but I also sort of like it. Hear me out, hear me out, stop arguing. 
Jason's gem cost two quid. It had three distinct sections to it and none of them really work that well, but you sort of get into the situation where it kind of works just well enough that you get angry about all of the bits that are really, really sloppy. The game lives on its own terms. It doesn't care about you, the player. It doesn't care about your skill level. Jason's gem is a free spirit. It exists to please itself. It's an independent woman who don't need no man. Jason's gem cares so little that it makes me care in its place. Just look at it. Look at it not giving a shit. How can it care so little? How can I make it care? Jason's gem is a dirty flirt. It's a 4 out of 10 that thinks it's a 7. And because it's so confident, you can't help but kind of see where it's coming from. You'll wake up the next morning, and there, on the pillar next to you, is Jason's gem. And you'll think, how did this happen? How did I wake up next to Jason's gem? It doesn't know how to collision detect properly. It's got graphics only its programmers could love. And yet, in the right light, Jason's gem looks okay. Well, not okay, but sometimes you can put up with it. It's a challenge to overcome, not just in terms of difficulty, but in a weird meta way, where you also have to overcome the challenge of the stupid decisions made while making it. To continue this random stream of metaphors that don't work, Jason's gem is not a diamond in the rough, it's a turd glued to a bucket. Sometimes you really want to use a bucket, but there's a turd glued to it, and the bucket has holes in it, but it was cheap. And it's there, so you use the bucket with the turd glued in it, and you find ways to plug the holes, and it's really awkward to use, but it's still a bucket. And it still sort of works as one. That's Jason's Gem, Game of the Year 1985.